is. What time it is. What time it is. Ask, Ask your Aussie. I'm, I'm gonna try to make it a little shorter somehow when I'm going through it. So here we you go. It, it says, um, Ash Yonties. It says, uh, Wait, you might have to drop this one in the chat because we yeah, might not yeah. be able to remember all this. <laughs> and I'll try to do it here because you know how the chat be acting up. You gotta cut it in half and all that stuff. I'll do it while we respond, maybe. Okay, here okay. We go. Um, it says, I don't know if this is better to ask your aunties or a discussion point, but it's something that I want to bring up to you all. Um, it says, ask your aunties. So actually, he did give us a shortened version, and then he gives us the background behind it. So it says, socially liberal, fiscally conservative is a trope used to make people feel, <laughs> wow, he's coming at us, to make people feel good for vocally supporting causes without putting money behind it. Education, trans rights, infrastructure, health care for it all, etc. All require money. So can you truly be socially liberal and fiscally conservative? So that's the ask your auntie's question. And then he kind of gives uh, reasons behind it or some background because he said this stems from an episode that he listened to that we had from the summer of 2020. And there was just something said that I want to challenge you all on. Um, he said specifically oh, Auntie Charnay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know exactly what that's coming from. And he said, Auntie, you mentioned you are socially liberal and fiscally conservative. And so mm. he put reasons why he doesn't think one could be both, but maybe it's just maybe go, go ahead. Like, that. Oh, you want to say the whole thing? Yeah, say the whole thing. We can't answer the question the correctly, correctly about the whole thing. Right. <laughs> Ooh, buckle up, because it's long as hell. It okay. says, um, while I understand what you mean by that, because it's something that is said a lot, I would argue that you cannot be both because they are directly related. Most people say they are fiscally conservative in regards to our national debt, which, to be honest, is absurdly high, but nonetheless should not be a metric to determine fiscal conservatism in politics. A balanced budget with no debt or at least manageable debt is necessary, whether liberal, conservative, black, white, brown, Puerto Rican, or Asian. However, when it comes to social programs, one cannot be fiscally conservative and social liberal. You cannot advocate socially for health care for all without fiscally supporting it. You cannot socially advocate for defunding the policy without also being willing to possibly throw more taxpayer money at other resources. Homelessness, trans rights, infrastructure, education, all these things require money. So, I, so while I understand the sentiment of being fiscally conservative, I would say that you really just want to not have our taxpayer money wasted, which isn't being fiscally conservative, it's being a person that understands money. The trope of socially liberal, socially liberal, fiscally conservative is just a masquerade for people that have means to support financially to say that they support a cause without actually financially supporting it. Furthermore, if I can be socially liberal, fiscally conservative, why can't I be fiscally liberal but socially conservative? It doesn't really exist because people have tied what they believe into what they will pay for. I hope all is well with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to end uh end the question yeah, hope goes all with you and he also gave his answer which maybe at the end of this i'll read that paragraph but okay so so i guess first and i forget what it was we might it was probably politics seasons if it's 2020 so I, I forget exactly how what led up to that conversation i do recall you saying the social liberal we were talking we form. were talking about blacks who are you know, we were talking about blacks who are conservatives. Okay. And then I had made the comment that I am socially um, liberal, but fiscally conservative. Okay. So do you, and, and so, we're, we're a podcast of ands. We feel a lot of things can be and, and I'm probably like the most gray of that, but do, maybe Dewan, let's start with you. Do you feel, do you agree with what he said in any parts of what he said, or do you still maybe explain why you feel like you're maybe liberal and conservative and conservative like fiscally yeah um so i think that the this individual makes some some really interesting and valid points period okay um i say that because that's an easier term for people to understand got it so i don't believe that um that being fiscally conservative means that we're not funding programs because the, for me, and this is my definition of 
social uh, liberalism is I believe that, that we need to support these programs financially, but we need to do it, in my opinion, without going into motherfucking debt. So the fact that the fact that our deficit is out of control and the fact that every time we get a Democrat in the in the White House, essentially focus on bringing down the national debt, which was raised up by overspending, not being fiscally conservative with the spending that's being done on these non-liberal issues. Right. Um, I believe in right sizing that. So, you know, while I don't disagree with the, the sentiment of, you know, that, that there people can hide behind this phrase as, you know, as, as a trope or whatever, first of all, Auntie Chardonnay ain't like that. So, you know, I throw money at the causes that are meaningful for me and meaningful right. for my community. And oftentimes if, well, not oftentimes, I don't go into debt doing so. <laughs> and I expect, <laughs> and I expect my government to be able to do the same. I believe, quite frankly, that we suffer on the social aspects of our great nation um, for pursuit of lining the pockets of the 1%. And that shit ain't right. And it doesn't sit right with me. So I understand and I, and I value balancing the budget in a way that doesn't disenfranchise people that's part of my community. Cause I'm always going to be black and gay first yeah, period. Yeah. I'm going to be for the community. <laughs> and so it's not about for me anyways, it's not about hiding behind some kind of, you know, label. Like I said, I use this term because it's a very abridged version of basically saying where I stand is on the liberal side of things, you know? So when it comes to education for all, when it comes to, do healthcare for all when it comes to making sure that we are significantly investing in the arts and sciences and in other kinds of what we would consider extracurriculars, but things like um, teaching young children about money management, about all of these other components that are about that are helpful for them to lead healthy and, and fruitful lives that suffer because the money are, is being taken out of those programs and funding other things that aren't benefiting our communities at all, but are certainly using or being used to, to line the pockets of the select few. And I'm not down with that. I'm also not down with, I get that, you know, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of specifically conservatives um, that are all about um, spending more money in our military budget and believe that that's the, you know, that's the appropriate way to, you know, for us to exert our power and whatnot. But we all know that the more money that we throw at them, we've seen those bills for, you know, $25,000 on a gold toilet that they be spending because they have the surplus and they have to make that money. They have to spend that money to keep it. So I don't, I don't believe in swinging that. And I don't believe in hiding behind any kind of terminology. <laughs> you know, I, I, I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. It was a so laugh at for the, me. It was the chuckle for me. <laughs> at the at the end of the day, at the end of the day, for me. Now there may be there, and there are other people out there. Like there are gays that say they, you know, that they're liberal. And then if you if we had the opportunity to look at their voter cards mm. and see what they do, just like them people that be going out there to Chick Fil A, which I don't do, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> just like them people that be doing that on the DL or whatever. Like, you know, I'm sorry, but for me personally, you know, I, there are, there are things that I believe that we should be spending our, our, our hard earned taxes on, and we shouldn't have to sacrifice our social programs. We shouldn't have to sacrifice social security. The fact that, that we have people that are scared about their financial retirement, we're all paying all this goddamn money into a system that we won't be able to utilize. Now, how the fuck is that right? So for me, fiscal responsibility is that you are looking at the budget and the money that you're supposed to, if we're collecting money for social security, that money better, better, better be there. And we shouldn't be borrowing against these social programs to fund things like the military and like these special interests that shouldn't be happening. So that's, that's my perspective. Jarrell. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of things. I... I really appreciate this question because it's one, this is, I'm assuming someone that has 
one, taking the time to go back to start rocking with us from the back. Period. The right? So you do write this question. You didn't just right. like, oh, I found out about this podcast. Let me just jump right in. No, you went back. So yeah, because this I, question came I, in I fucks with you. I so fucks like, with you. So I appreciate whoever this person is. Like, I appreciate it. Because that's a real person. That's a real Period. community member. So I, I appreciate that. And I also appreciate the fact uh, or just the comfort in asking for clarification too. Because the truth of the fact is, we know Auntie Dewan, and we know what she means. She's the, she's the auntie that definitely put her money where her her pocket where her money is yeah. too. You know, she buy back. You know, she buy black. She supports the causes. She donates. She does these things. So I could understand when you hear something and you may not know the individual, you will ask a question like this. So Absolutely. that's fair. So I understand where the question is coming from. But to be fair, that's not who Auntie Dewan is. Right. Now, as far as me. I agree. I am. I don't got a lot of money, but I give what I got. But I'm also a frontline bitch. So I'm the mm-hmm. person that's going to always just I'm I'm right there in the front. Like, let, let's go, um, because that's how I show up the most. Um, but for me, I I don't have a lot of money, so I don't have a lot to give. And I give where I can and I do what I can. And I honestly feel like that's where it should be. But I definitely understand when people hear, you know, fiscally conservative, I agree with this person. That's exactly where my mind would have gone to is you're someone who is very choosy with how you spend your money and you're, you're not putting your money where your mouth goes when it comes to being social, socially, um, what do you say? Socially liberal. Liberal. You know? right. Yeah. So I understand how the, you're right writer both things can exist but i understand what auntie dewan was coming from was that was a term that kind of made it make sense in a way where i was like well i don't gotta break my back to also be socially you know fiscally liberal as well too like here in washington a couple years ago they passed some kind of law where now um either you opt in for this program where you pay a certain type of money to take care of the elderly or you pay additional taxes when tax time come um, to support mm-hmm. the elderly around here for, for, for care. And I voted for it. I voted for people to have to do this because of mm-hmm. the fact that we need to take care of each other. Like you, you genuinely cannot be socially liberal and, but be afraid to put your money where your mouth is. You know, when they be like, or oh, resources, or resources, resources, whatever it is. But even, but just, even just the the whole eight cents for a, a bag at the grocery store, bitch. Yes, if you want to talk about, I give a fuck about the planet, bitch. You can't pay eight cents for a damn bag. <laughs> Come on, I did, that at, I did that at Whole Foods yesterday, <laughs> bro. But I mean, like the the number of people arguing about it, but they want to be like, oh my God, global warming. Oh my God, we're not doing this to protect the earth. But they want to talk about eight damn cents. I got damn target for a damn bag. (laughs) Like, it don't make sense. So I completely agree with the person. Like, if you're going to be socially liberal, you have to be ready to start helping where we can. Because everyone's right. When they talk about free healthcare and free education and free all these things, that money's going to have to come from somewhere. Yeah. is going yeah. to have to come from somewhere and i don't understand why we don't give a fuck about each other and loving each other so much where we're like you know what i got you and and, and whenever i need you got me like if we all just got on the same page it will be a system that work itself because you never will go out because somebody got you just like you got somebody in the way that you mm-hmm. can you know, someone's mm-hmm. going to fill in the gap, but we all have to be on the same page in order for that to work. It's like you wasn't raised right. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> right. That's what, like, you, know? raised, you wasn't raised right. Like, but, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and what do you think, few bro? A th- few things like, and I had to write them down as they were coming in my brain. I, I think f- first thing that kind of popped in my brain was just like, I feel that socially conservative, A, has been kind of ruined by white men that just terminology so there's already a negative maybe connotation around that term and so maybe it's just even saying like socially responsible you're responsible of what's going out and watching what you know what what's coming in and watching what goes out and things like that 
another part of me is just like, at the end of the day, this deficit ain't going nowhere. Wait, you're they're saying you said, fiscally you said, responsible. Yeah, fiscally oh, responsible, fiscal, not yeah, socially responsible. Okay, because you said socially, socially and I was like, yeah, I, was like yeah, yeah. No, I said <laughs> white <laughs> people the reason why. For real? Okay. Why you don't... <laughs> No, no, no. Let me, back, let me even chop that out. Hold on. Let me start that shit over. Uh, uh, no, uh, you better leave that in there, Vince. And we go check, girl. No, fiscally, fiscally conservative has been ruined yes. by white men. There you and go. so that's where a lot of that negative. Damn, yes. I'm so mad. That's, that's, so <laughs> that's okay, boo. That's a, Look, we got, got your back. Before Thank we get you. another one in 2024 Jesus. saying what well, Auntie right. Carell said that's in 2022. Like, <laughs> it's going to be a campaign act. Auntie Carell said. <laughs> no, fiscally conservative has been ruined by yeah. white men because they're not caring for the community outside mm -hmm. of other white men. Yes. So it's hard for them to be fiscally conservative and socially liberal because they're not looking out for nobody else but they sell. Right, right. However, I feel like people of color, and, and there's always anomalies and things like that, so it's not all, but I would say it, there might be a chance for an and situation for communities of color because we are trying to help our communities come up. And that might be tied fiscally and socially at the same time. And you still might be fiscally responsible of making sure that you're not overspending of what you don't have, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's where Dewan comes from. It's just like, I'm responsible with money and I would expect others in the government to do so as well, because <clears throat> if I'm taking the time to be considerate enough to do so and paying all this taxpayer money, that should be the bare minimum expectation. Mm -hmm. I, and I agree fundamentally for me, I'm like the debt. I, I almost feel like the debt at a government level. And I'm trying to watch how I almost say it, it almost is a, not a made up thing because it's true, but there's ways to there's always ways to find money and print money and do things that you need to do to find when you need to do it. The government sometimes, especially the people that elected don't care about the social part of it. So they'll find $40 billion to give to Ukraine right quick, right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm not saying whatever it is, <laughs> but they won't find $40 billion to help get rid of student loan debt. They won't find $40 billion to fix communities up and bring them up. Mm -hmm. So that's the part where I think the social liberal mm -hmm. part really plays into it. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, if the conservatives are gonna play that way, I'm going to be liberal and play that way too. spend some money to make sure at least my communities are getting up with it and we'll deal with it later because since they've been doing it that way for 400 years and we still here, we'll find a way. <laughs> so mm -hmm. part of me is like, in theory, yes, I, I'm responsible with my money. And in theory, for me, my brain's like, if we don't got it. Why we, how, how are we spending? But they, they clearly they just be finding billions and billions that I don't know where it is in this checkbook. They always find that money. So, mm -hmm. so for me, it's just like if I were in place, let me find me a quick fifty billion to to, to help uh, my communities. And so that's how I think I would play. So I'd be like socially liberal and fiscally liberal and just spend, <laughs> even though in theory I get that that's not how it should be. Yeah. Um, and there was something else I want to see here. Oh, well, anyway, yeah. Um, so again, like Jarrell and Dewan said, it's a great question. And, and I completely get it because I think there's the negatively behind fiscally, let me get it right again, fiscally conservative has been because white men have not helped people that look like us and sound like us in our communities. And so I think it's their responsibility <laughs> for this negativity, honestly. And it's up to us to maybe shift what that looks like and sounds like what fiscally conservative looks like in our communities and say fuck yeah. the other the other maybe definition of it. Yeah, I think the only thing that I would add um, to what you both said is that, um, you know, I think we all agree that language matters. And yeah. we saw, yes, 100%. Uh, we saw <laughs> concepts like defund the police be divisive you know, based on the language that's yeah. that's being used and how, you know, how parties on both sides, on all sides, you know, interpreted that um, that phrase defund the defund the police in many different ways. And so, you know, I think I'm always open to learning. I know that language is evolving. And so if there is, you know, better terminology uh, that I can use to help clarify that position 
position. For those that, you know, who might not be listening for a long time and know kind of like how we rock and how we roll or whatever, um, also recognizing that in, in, a, in a public, on a public platform such as this, a soundbite <laughs> outside of context yeah. can go a many a different ways. And I'm not, I'm not making the, the assumption that this is what happened in this particular case. Yeah you know, writer of the question. I'm, I, you know, clearly you were listening to the conversation yeah, and made some various two observations, like, Damn, you know, so, 20, 20. but I, but I think it's also important that we recognize that sometimes we might not have, we might not have the vernacular, That's you know, that, um, that, you know, appropriately articulates our point of view. And we may use language that can be triggering or could be perceived as covering for other kind of covert intentions that's not necessarily aligned with what we're really intending so i recognize that um and if there's other language that we should be using and or we need to make some shit up like you know <laughs> black people will have our own language anyway so sure, at the well, end of the day like, it, that, 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 and be like bitch i know look, this is the flippity flop this is the fi- like, flippity know. flop so so they <laughs> did that to us we're gonna <laughs> flippity flop it on them right period, so period whatever it needs to be. So at the end of the day, you know, I, I think I just want to call out that, you know, that language is always evolving and our interpretation, like for us to be intentional about how we use language is really important. And sometimes we say things, you know, for the sake of expediency, you know, and, Ooh, and like you know, of course on the, uh, on the, po- <laughs> and then on the, on the podcast, you know, we, we're also here to entertain. Let's be clear, <laughs> you know, <laughs> disclaimer disclaimer do not take you know this <laughs> these ask your aunties is for entertainment purpose purposes only we don't want do, do we not, don't want <laughs> we do, do not, not want come after us <laughs> look legally <laughs> or physically <laughs> because because we got one that got hands advice. we got one that's fiscally <laughs> conservative and we got whatever the fuck i am i'll find some words in some way to the, the chess maneuvers hey, uh, shit out i'm sitting over here like i said what i said <laughs> <laughs> and then quickly too we just like get- i say like i told y'all run that back if i was wrong right. <laughs> <laughs> you said if i was wrong play the clip it's gonna play be the clip. Play the clip. <laughs> say what i'm saying euphoria <laughs> Uh, but let's read this person's yeah. answer too. It says, um, obviously my answer is no, you cannot be fiscally conservative and socially liberal, liberal because of reasons listed above. Though I will recognize that there can be differences in what you may want to support with your money within that liberalism. I heard this argument from another acquaintance once, uh, one time, and it made me really think about how I spend my money and, and to what causes it goes to. Just want to share so that we can be clear and what we mean and hopefully show people that if we want some of these social programs, we must put pressure on our politicians to use our money correctly and balance. Hope all is well with y'all. There we go. So, so it, honestly, can I just, the, can I I just add one like more thing? Sounds like we're all saying a similar thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can I just add one more thing? This is not just about money. And that's why I made that point about yeah. resources because that can be your time. That could be, I'm actually, you know, oh, I'm going to send an email or I'm going to write a letter or I'm going to make a phone call or I'm going to, you know, physically volunteer or I'm going to, you know, help at a polling place. So, you know, again, you know, it, this is not just a, a money conversation because at the end of the day, you know, like um, I am not a frontline person, you know, I, 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 I've, I've recognized that. And I've even come to terms with, you know, like working through the shame that I had around that because I thought, oh, well, you know, I should be one of those people, you know, that if you have the opportunity, you're going to march with Martin Luther King or whatever. And it's like, I'm not built like that. No, I I, I am not built like that. But that doesn't diminish the way that I can contribute. And the fact that I use this platform, the fact that I use my whole daytime job to combat you know, to combat racism and discrimination and, 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 and inequality that exists in the workplace within my professional life, you know, that there are, and there are many other things that we all do to help contribute um, our resources, whatever they are, 
um, to the causes that are most meaningful for us. And I think the one of the things that, that most frustrate a lot of us, I think all of the aunties is apathy. Cause Absolutely. ain't nothing, ain't nothing like somebody who's sitting on the sidelines, ain't doing got a goddamn thing, but complaining and you expecting some results like that's that word. shit, mm-hmm. that shit that's don't fly. Word. Yeah. Absolutely. So that, thank you for that question. And thank you. Yeah. Like Terosa, thank you for listening because that shows you've been going through the catalog. Yes. <laughs> Cause that was two years ago. That was two years ago, but it's yeah. very timely that you sent this in because we're in that cycle again and we're mm-hmm. in, having these conversations again. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Continue to send your ask you on questions at AYA at minority report.com or DM us. And we also have an update from last week. Ask you on question. <laughs> so, Oh, we earlier I said it was last week about the dick. That was two weeks ago. Last weeks week's ago, episode yes. was the mental health awareness uh, question and have an update. Cause the, the listener listened to that episode and said, so I found a therapist. Hold on. So I found a therapist. I tried meds before, but had the same sexual issues that Auntie Jarrell had. Um, but I didn't change it. Wait, but didn't change it. So I stopped. My mm-hmm. boyfriend said, as long as long, as long as I'm working on it, he's with me. Thank you all for the feedback. Love y'all and appreciate your thoughts and support. So thank you for listening to that. And that's glad awesome. that you, you, you took it, whatever advice we gave. Um, and and we mentioned too, like if the the first meds you didn't like the 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 results mm-hmm. of it, there's other options Ranger, out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and your and therapist. I, yeah, and your yeah. therapist. But like the med part is something that like I'm glad I was able to share because yeah. that was something that was unknown to me. And I, for a minute there, I was like, man, I'm am I really this messed up that like I can't even do that now. And then it dawned on me that it was my meds that was stopping me from being from being able to do that. But yeah. there's multiple different types of meds. And um, my, actually how I'm working through it with my um, doctor is I have to try like four different generic brands before I can get this new name. brand. Yeah, this yeah. name brand one that might That's be insurance actually bullshit, be more. By the way. Yeah, for insurance, <laughs> yeah, this insurance bullshit. Um, so I'm actually going to be changing it up again um, come June as well, too, um, because the truth of the fact is like it is supposed to help you feel like different. You are supposed to feel different. And it and at some point you do get off of it. You I've, at some points you find yourself being like, oh, I skipped the pill today and I still felt good. And I see that from time to time. But I still find myself quite often being like, is this me or is this the pill? And that is something that when you're battling through depression, anxiety, your brain still kind of thinks about. It, yeah. And the moment you feel one thing not happy, it's like, damn, this shit ain't working, you know? So yeah. I do know the difference. And I'm thankful that I took that first pill that did cause the whole being able not to come thing because I know what it felt like to finally be like, Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> <you. laughs> I, like, I was like, why you can't the you window. Doing that day? Look, to, to the, the wall. wall. Look, the one time <laughs> I didn't scream, down my the ball. one time I didn't scream, representative <laughs> immediately on the phone. I, I said, yes. representative. <laughs> you know, she was respectful. Okay. But I yes, do so I know the difference. I do feel like one of the biggest misnomers about modern medicine, particularly about, um, you know, like medication, prescription, prescription, prescription medication. Sorry, I cannot talk today at all. (laughs) Um, One of the biggest misconceptions is that 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 medications are almost equal to, let's say, surgery. Surgery, you go in, you get something done. And you know the result. A lot of medication is, it's about chemistry that is dealing with your own physiology and your own body chemistry and and the diet that you have and your own genetics and all of that other stuff that becomes an unknown. So although there may be several drugs, which is why there are several versions of the same, several versions of drugs that treat the same kind of uh, issue, it's because they don't always work on all people in the same way. It's, and while look, they it's ask just what other medications like, you're also on as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Look, if you, if you, look, if you take a gummy 
if two people take a, the same gummy, they may have two completely different experiences. We know, you know, we know and that's, experience. <laughs> she had to, she had to make it relatable. Right. <laughs> Cause you know, she had to make it relatable, but like at the end of the day, the reason, and if, and, and if you go to any kind of, you know, like, you know, weed shop or whatever, and you talk to, to the people that work there, and especially if it's a good one, they will know that it is about chemistry. It is about, it's about what you've eaten that day. It's about how many, how many, how much of that is, is carbohydrates. It's about what other medications are, are you taking? It's about your current physical state. It's about, it, it, there's so many things, so many factors. And I think, and, and Jarrell, I mean, please, you know, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong or you have a different perspective, particularly mm -hmm. on this topic. But I yeah. think a lot of people go into um, situations like, like this with the notion that, okay, well, I'm going to get on meds. My doctor is going to prescribe me like the pill that I'm supposed to take or the three pills that I'm supposed to take. And that's supposed to work for me. And if it doesn't work for me now, it's like, well, then damn, what's wrong with me? But it might not be anything wrong with you. It's just they, that's not the kind of pills for you. I will say that's probably the second step. I think the big, the first step and the biggest step is more so coming to terms that you need the help. Right. I think that's the oh, reason that stops yeah. people from taking medication first because of the fact that you have to come to in terms that you can't do something on your your own for yourself and mm -hmm. there's a sense of vulnerability in that and just as much as we preach about like forgiveness or preach being human like we all make mistakes and you know like the same thing happens to us as well too you know sometimes we come up short within our own selves and we need that assistance to help our own selves you know and and that's where um you know like meds come in in a sense of you know you can take care of yourself um, and you can get a little push with the help of meds. Um, for me, it was, I come from a family that didn't, I come both sides of my family, don't necessarily put the, the best in their health. And mm -hmm. so I've seen a lot of examples of what happens when you don't take care of yourself. And it was for me, I decided that I wanted to break that generational curse and I want to start showing up and I want to start showing up for myself and being an example for my nephews and my nieces about the importance of taking care of your body. And that may be with the help of meds or eating healthy and working out. They are all the same thing. The overall goal is to take care of yourself. Yeah. I am on antidepressants. I am on um, anti-anxiety medicine. And I am now on... Um, uh, high blood pressure medicine as well, too, because my blood pressure is now through the roof, something that also runs high in my family, but also it's one of the highest, like silent killers out there. Yeah. That people die yeah. from, from not Especially checking in the black community. Right. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, like it is important that we take care of ourselves and do what we need to do to see the next day. Mm -hmm. And if and we a don't take these next steps, we are robbing ourselves potentially of additional days in the future. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And in and, 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 and another and situation, it could be it, like you mentioned, like meds and being eating healthy and things like that. And, and, and it could be a combination y'all like mm -hmm. it's cool. Like, and like, and I get the history of why the black community and a lot of black and brown communities, don't like the doctor i get the history of it one thousand percent my sister went to tuskegee so they teach that shit. so like i get it <laughs> but we need to realize we a find the right doctors there's a lot of black and brown doctors out there the but we can part. also advocate for ourselves as well and if it don't feel right speak up yeah like jerome Jer said this med ain't working for me i, I gotta come mm -hmm. bitch i gotta come <laughs> like, speak up for yourself don't be miserable and like just because mm -hmm. you think there's only a one it's not gonna fit all it's not gonna fit all so that's cool to speak up for yourself that's dope yeah. and it's okay it's yeah. okay that's, that's also why i feel like i'm sorry that, that's why i also feel like like our ask your auntie segment when people are asking questions 
I feel it's so powerful because Absolutely. oftentimes, and I, I've been in like the training space, the learning and development space all the time. So I've been facilitating training programs for the last 25 years in my, my, my professional career. So, and one of the things that we always say is that if you have a question, ask it because nine times out of 10, somebody else has that same exact yeah. question. Yeah. And that happens in real life. And I think that's what makes this experience, you know, this experience that we have, the privilege that we have to be able to, 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 to have the trust of our community mm-hmm. Um, and sharing some of the most intimate things about their lives. And I think the value that that brings is that there are other people out there who are going through the same exact situations and they're able to feel seen and feel a little bit less um, alone because they now know that it's like, oh, damn, well, I'm, I'm not the only one that was feeling this way. Yeah. Ooh, that, yeah. that actually takes a little bit of the, the load off. I'm still in my shit, but yeah. at least I know that I'm not in this by myself. And one other thing I want to add, and I'll end it with that because it's, I don't want to beat the, the horse too much because we had a whole ask auntie about it. But I also just want to say, um, if the listener is listening to this too, or anyone that's listening to this going through something similar, try not to compare what you're going through to what I'm going through mm-hmm. because I'm still going through every day and I'm not going to sugarcoat and act like I I made it through the tunnel. I see the light, but I'm yeah. still definitely in that tunnel and I want to be clear on that. Yeah. And my path is unique to me because of how my body is built and what I'm going through and my experience that led to where I am today. So how I get there is going to be different than how you may get there, but do not discredit yourself because you are not where I am. I had to take a route to get here and you will have to take your own route to get to where I am too. It will happen. You just have to make sure you keep choosing yourself every single day. And the next thing you know, you didn't travel the whole mile and you didn't ran a half marathon. Well, I ain't running nothing because like, because <laughs> of that, that, that rub it. Right. <laughs> but no, because I don't run nothing but this mouth. But, you know, but the point being is, you know, it will happen at your own pace. And that's yeah. one thing I definitely want to make sure that I say very out loud, because, yes, we all definitely go through and we all have our battles. Um, but how we solve them, how we come through them may not always be the same for each person. So oh, it doesn't man. mean that you're not you know, so, yeah. Love that. So again, send your questions, AYA at minorityreport.com or DM us. These are dope, dope, dope questions, dope, dope conversations. We enjoy the vulnerability you guys are having with us. We enjoy you checking us potentially a little bit and yes. getting clarification that you need to talk about it because that's what this is for. That's why we're building Absolutely. this damn community, y'all. Yes, that's ma'am. talk. Let's have, I mean, obviously, we, we'll have a kiki and, you know, talk about Jesse Williams, mm, batter up and everything, but <laughs> these conversations are also needed. So, um, and that, I know we're that actually is a better here. name for that that play. It should have been called Batter Up mm, instead of Batter Up. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty like oak. <laughs> <laughs>